Hello and welcome to the next 100 Days podcast. My name is Graham Arrowsmith. And my name's Kevin Appleby. And you, Graham, in 400 episodes, we've never had a man of the cloth on the podcast. No, so we haven't. <laughs> no, we haven't. So we're going to make up for that today. Yeah, we are. And we and not only that, this man um, went to school barely two miles away from where my grandmother lived. And Ooh. and so there you are. Uh, and uh, w- I'd like to welcome today Reverend Donald McCorkindale. It's good to be here with you. Hi. So you, you, Glasgow connections then. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> now my mother was uh, born in Glasgow, so I do feel a, a huge affinity to the place. But um, uh, towards the end of her life, she, uh, my grandmother, lived in Annie's Land, and mm. um, and we used to go up there quite regularly and um, set off really early to get up to Scotland. Um, and of course, she'd laid on an afternoon tea, so it'd been about eight in the morning. But we would been eating jelly and things like that. So, but you know, but she, timing was never a strong point. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually not not far from there just now. Um, although I, you know, now live and work up in the the West Highlands. Um, my my mother is uh, down in Bears Den, not far from Annie's Land at all. Absolutely. And uh, I popped down to, to to see her. I knew that uh, much better internet here than we've got up in the West Highlands. So that's all oh. worked out quite nicely. <laughs> well, I mean, what a lovely place that you that your ministry is. I mean, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, um, I've been up there 12 and a half years. Um, prior to that, I had been minister in Bonnybridge near Falkirk, kind of right in the middle between Glasgow and Edinburgh, mm-hmm. and then moved about as far east as I could and was minister in Dalgetty Bay right. for 11 years. And then uh, got um, young kids um, at that point, um, two boys who were still preschool, and thinking, if we stay here... We'll get into school and all the family life stuff around Dalgetty Bay and, and we'll never move. So there was time for um, a move, another adventure. And went to look at the uh, churches around Strontian, Ardgour and Morvern on the, um, well, what, what folk call the Ardnamurchan Peninsula. The, the purists would say that that's just the, the sticky out bit right at the extreme uh, west of mainland Britain yeah. and uh, went up, saw around the place. And, you know, there was a bit of me thinking, no, this just isn't for me. And and driving back down, uh, my wife and I were, were talking about it and said, well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, thinking about it, praying about it, and also hearing our very young kids saying, "Are we going to go and live in that in that house? It'd be great for for hide and seek." Uh, and they kept going on about it. And I think it was about three weeks later that um, I had said to my wife, "You know, I've got to get back to those folk and tell them that I'm not interested." And that conversation took a wee while, and we realised that actually we thought that it would be good to move, and maybe a wee a wee nudge from from God. Uh, mm. that that was the right thing to do and uh, 12 and a half years later absolutely it was it was the right thing to do yeah. i had gone to what was three small rural parishes Strontia, and ardgour and morvern mm-hmm. um something around 1100 square miles mm-hmm. um no actually i know it um yes I, I, it is around right. about that maybe a little less bit- um about the same number of people. So I was going to, to somewhere very much smaller than I had been in Dogetty Bay, um, but with, with only a tenth of the, the population. So a very different um, different kind of ministry. Uh, but really, they, I, I, in the extremities, I've always found those people, like Hull, for instance, and, you know, when the, at the end of the line sort of thing, I suppose Stranra is almost in that sort of... Uh, context when you're at the end edge of uh, there are different type of people i think and, and is that what you've found in that sort of um, area uh, absolutely i mean i think one of the things i i keep hearing folks saying oh there isn't the sense of community that there used to be mm. but actually having been a a, a, a townie um and and moving into to that rural west highland uh culture i see you know 
a far greater sense of, of community. And, you know, if I could rewind the clock, I realise that I, I could and should have been far more engaged in the community rather than, than just within the, the church. Yeah. When, when I was in Delgetti Bay with two more two Sunday morning services, 9.30 and, and 11 o'clock, and on a good Sunday, we'd see 250, 300 folk. Wow. So we had a vibrant church community and actually didn't have to work the the community beyond the walls of the church yeah. to, to keep going. But yes, it's very, very different. Uh, I, 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 now. I worked as a trustee for a charity, for a charity and, and the one word that really, and forgive me, I'm, I'm not picking holes, but the one word that really bothered me was community. I didn't, I, it was a town hall. Okay. And I, and I wanted to um, sort of have the phrase that we were there to support all residents of our, our, our town. Uh, and, and I was resisting the idea of a community because the the whole idea of community, in my view, is it, uh, it almost has walls on the outs on the outer side of it, and it's almost like it's it's a barrier to people to come in. Whereas, if you serve all residents, whether they're sixty or whether they're six, it you know you, that you have that ambition to help all residents. And I, I don't know, I just it, it and it and when you look at things like community centres and stuff like, they don't they don't appear to be for all residents that just appear to be for those people who bother to go to that community re- uh, uh, center. It might be me. It probably is. But I, that was how I looked at the word community. Mm. I, I think I, I think the church ha- has often um, you know, created these walls around the, the church community. And, and it does mm. make it very difficult for folk to yeah. um, to. to come in and uh, you know over recent years um I mean, certainly pre-covid but you know covid uh, exacerbated and and focused our attention on on what was what was going on and yeah num- numbers numbers are on the <laughs> on the decline mm. and and certainly in the church of scotland you know having to make some very difficult decisions about the number of buildings and um, the, the allocation of uh, ministers. Uh, the first of January, there, I, um, my my territory, my charge was increased uh, to take in what had been the parishes of Akarako and Ardnamurchan. So right. I now have within my uh, two linked parishes the most westerly point of mainland Britain, right. and and there in in the Ardnamurchan. Community, maybe it is a word that I use far too much. Um, but there, they're, they're actually on the 13th of next month, 13th September, um, there's the, the formal opening of a new church building. Yeah. So while while there are lots of closures going on, uh, there are the the glimpses of, of hope and growth and, and new things happening. We have a lots of business people on, don't we, Kevin? And and when it when it comes to um the church it's always a it's always sort of the the challenge is that we're becoming more secular and, and less and less shall we say fearful of god and and, and the things of fearful is the wrong word but basically um following the word of uh, of god so basically we're, we're not like that as much as we were when, when i was a kid um is that the same way you are in northumberland kevin is it is it the song it is yes you're out in the sticks as well aren't you yeah and I, I'm seeing in our local community exactly what Donald's just been talking about. We've got a a very impressive church in our village, which until very recently we had a vicar. Vicar retired and is not to be replaced. So we've got a a, a, a whole group of maybe 10 churches in it that are being looked after by two people. Mm. And that, that seems to be the general trend. And... Mm very very small congregations it, it it just but does that mean then you 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 almost have to follow the um uh the, the sort of the marketing um philosophies to actually bring and, and attract more people into into the church although it might be not necessarily into a building but into the church and I, and i think there's a distinction or maybe there isn't 
Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, I mean, part, part of my story is that uh, 42 years ago, when when I left school, mm-hmm. uh, there was there was a bit of me, there was something at the back of my mind that thought, um, I want to be a minister. But I wasn't quite ready to accept that. And mm-hmm. I started a degree in business administration. And one of the subjects that I was doing was marketing. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the subjects I did very badly in, actually. And <laughs> oh, and it was sort of during during that year that I realized that that world of business administration wasn't where where I wanted to go. And and I transferred to, to study theology at mm-hmm. uh, in, in St. Andrews. Mm-hmm. But that kind of business and, and leadership um, aspect ha- has always been with me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, and, you know, having having had a bad experience of university, things things didn't actually get all that much better when I went to St Andrews, and mm-hmm. and there was a point where I was thinking, you know, I'm, am I going to complete this? But mm-hmm. there was something of that sense of of call to to ministry that that kept me going, mm-hmm. and and I, I kind of crucial moment when you know my my days at university were probably coming to a rapid end i i discovered something of memory technique and, and mind mapping and uh, tony buzan mind mapping stuff mm-hmm. uh, i'm sure you're familiar with mm-hmm. completely changed my my attitude to uh, my studying and learning and and i started really enjoying it and you know that that's what then got me through uh, the rest of of my degree and a, a few years back, probably getting on for 10 years now, I I did some open university studying on, on leadership and, and change. Uh, so that's very much uh, an interest of mine. So are you, are, you a, are you a kind of a standout minister then within the Church of Scotland? Are you, are um, you distinctly what, different what, what in any way? What does that mean? Well, I we, mean, we, we I, say we're all equal. <laughs> well, well, I, I, well, of course we're not equal, are we? But, but basically, we we um we all have our different strengths and weaknesses. But at the end of the day, um, I, in what way do you stand out from others, perhaps in the in the Church of Scotland? Um, I during uh, well, I've been thir- thirty two years um, mm-hmm. ordained. And and during at least half of that, I've been involved in in some of the national committees and and structures of the church, and mm-hmm. and I've always really enjoyed that. I've also always found it really frustrating, because that there's there's something in me that says you know let's let's have the can do attitude, mm-hmm. but there are so many others you know. It's a wee bit kind of hackneyed and cliched, but it happens. You know, we tried it once before and it didn't work, <laughs> or we don't do things like that here. Yeah. Um, so I, I have, you know, been up against um, a lot of and resistance many, to to change. How many times have you heard that exact thing in the office? <laughs> we tried that well, before and it didn't work. Well, you hear it from clients. As well, from, yeah, it's one of those things that people say. Oh, you do direct mail, Graham? Yeah, well, yeah, but well, isn't that all dead now? And well, no, it isn't. And and um, you know, but oh, we did it once before. Can you show me what you did? Oh, yes, and and then you find out that you know. Well, I'm I'm with the people who didn't respond. I mean, it's it. You know, what you sent out is rubbish. I mean, at the end of the day, it's sort of so that the end of the look. It sounds to me that you're like the rest of us. You're impatient in some ways to actually do good. Is that what? Is that? Is that? Is that? A, am I? Am I crediting you something with, with something that you that you shouldn't shouldn't be credited with? <laughs> um, no, I think I think I. Yeah, I mean, I, I in in May this year I completed a four year stint as convener of the. The, the business committee of the of the general assembly so right. it was the annual event in, in edinburgh and um well at least in theory you know I, I was the one that was responsible for the agenda and keeping keeping everything uh, r- running along and certainly over the last few years um w- working around all the the covid restrictions there have often been times when, when folk were saying 
no, just we 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 can't do that. Um, but yes, I, I have been credited with with being the one who um, kind of steered and motivated the church through. Well, we can actually do it online, and we can have hybrid meetings. And yeah, our our own rules say that we we can't because no one no one ever envisaged this, and we can. And our own rules are there to be changed if they're not. If yeah. they're not fit for purpose in the in the current situation, it's it's very frustrating to me that um, in this country and in in in, in other countries I'm aware of that during COVID that people um, prevented people from worshiping together. Extremely mm. annoying. Um, mm. uh, that yet they allowed people to go on the streets and and uh, protest. <laughs> then again, Graham, and I think there's an interesting thing in COVID that. It meant that people got out of places where maybe half a dozen or a dozen people came together in person on a Sunday morning and you had a new way of getting a much bigger, let's say for want of a better word, corporate assembly using technology. Well, Kevin's Kevin's uh, in charge of the make the best use of of a lousy situation department, um, but um, but what what can I say? I'm I'm just I'm just a, a an awkward uh, curmudgeon, and, and I just I, I did I don't like what they did to us, and I don't like what they're planning for us in the in the autumn either. Mm. You know, I, mean, I, I I would challenge your 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 thought, Graham, that it stopped people worshiping. I think it forced people to worship in different ways. Okay. And from from March 2020, um, I, I, I think the first Wednesday evening in, in lockdown, I had gone online. Um, I've always enjoyed you know, the gadgets and computing things. Uh, so it, it wasn't a problem to me. Um, I went online and we had Wednesday evening prayers. Yeah. And every Wednesday since, uh, so last night I was online. I think I think there were two Wednesdays kind of early on when I just completely forgot about it. <laughs> but for uh, for those uh, what three years, and every Sunday um, we we still do a, a video worship um, video there on on YouTube and linked from our. our church website yeah. uh, last sunday's um last time i looked 120 hits or something like that so that that kind of helps when 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 i'm thinking goodness there were there were only eight folk in that church on sunday morning um mm. i've got six six church buildings we don't i don't get around them all on a sunday uh, so we've, we've had to find new ways oh, okay. and well, yeah. all right, I, I, I accept that there are different views and different ways of doing things. It's, it, I, I, I'm just a little bit anti-establishment as, as an individual. Just can't help myself. But, but having said that, um, but Kevin, I think he's far more conciliatory. It's probably why we worked uh, reasonably well together. <laughs> he always sees this sort of sunny side. And, but, uh, but, but having said that, um, your challenge is the same whether you're delivering um, sermons online or whether you, or you, you know, you you're actually out there walking around and talking to people and making friends of people and, and showing them a different way of living. Are you likely to get more people by walking your minister, walking your areas and actually talking to people and bringing them into, into the church in that way? Yeah. I mean, at, at, at the end of the day, that is the only kind of marketing that works. I, I, I constantly saying to, to my folk, Yes, it's important that we put things online and that we put the poster up in the village shop and show, so on. But it's only going to work if that becomes an excuse for you to talk to someone and say, I'm going to come along to the church on Sunday. Or do you know that there's these things happening online? Um, I, I, I really do believe that, that word of mouth is the, the, the only um, effective um, marketing publicity. Well, I agree. I, 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 it, it, it's certain. Uh, it, it, absolutely it's it's some and i think you'd be quite good at it i mean the, the fact that you're on this podcast and, and willing to subject yourself to kevin appleby well you know it says it all really he's not worried about graham arrowsmith no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. this is a huge point though if you if you look at marketing in general no matter what it is that you're marketing for people have in a way become immune to seeing adverts to seeing posters 
to even say social media posts. And I think everything has to be geared to say, how can we start a conversation? Mm. Certainly that's that's my attitude now on, on social media, doing lots of stuff to publicize this podcast, my other podcast, the wider grow CFO business. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, but the whole purpose of being on LinkedIn is to start conversations with people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think in the church, uh, you know, many of us have, you know, in, embraced social media for, for a while, but it was probably just before the, the lockdown, I was beginning to realize that, all I was doing was putting you know, online publicity that was saying, come and see us in the church building on Sunday. Mm. And I think more and more, and it is difficult, but more and more, I think we have to see the, the online stuff as actually how we engage people in developing their, their spiritual life. And yeah. another huge problem that that we've got in the church is that there are so many folk um, tell me, um, oh, I'm, I'm not religious, I'm not a churchgoer, but I'm spiritual. Mm. And I, I think that the secular world um, has has become more spiritual. Um, mm. We hear a lot about um, mindfulness and meditation. And the church has to be bold and say, hello, we've been doing that for thousands of years. <laughs> <laughs> you own it I mean, at the end of the day you, you do don't you and and that's really important i mean it, the the logic if i was your marketing manager i'd be saying right all right okay lads you're the bobby i want you on the beat and i want you chatting to people because you're brilliant at chatting to people you do it every sunday you you you, you, you know you, you have this wonderful connection to people but also you, you you've got you've you've got the training you've you, you know you've read, you've read the book and in a in, in a way it's that idea of actually um, proper social media, mm-hmm. as in face-to-face social media, that basically gives you the chance of actually influencing people. But the biggest challenge that I see, and forgive me if I'm talking out of order here, because it, the biggest challenge I see is that sometimes the church, and it might be more of a Church of England thing than Scotland, is that you're that there's been this sort of move towards I want to be really soft, soft with people as opposed to clear with people. Mm-hmm. And I and I don't know whether or not that's hurting rather than helping. I, I, have I got something wrong there or is it something you recognise? I, I I think you're absolutely right. I, I think you are. Um, I think we, um, you know, folk often talk about the, the, the Scottish reserve. Um, and I think sometimes within the church, we, we collude with that. And we, we we allow folk to think that, that that faith spirituality is is something that is is private. Now, obviously, in a sense, it it, it is deeply personal. But when we also make it private, we are completely missing the point of Jesus' great commission to the church. You know, go tell make disciples um it, it's about sharing the good news and, and not keeping it all to to ourselves um mm. I, I, as you were talking there I, I was feeling that twinge of of guilt thank you um yeah i, I we do our be best saying... to impress our guests that's what all i can say <laughs> but um i i should and must endeavor to spend more time um out and about knocking doors talking to folk um, and 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 letting them see that that the church might just have something for them. Far too many folk, I think, believe that the church is just something else to make life busy and stressful. Mm. Where actually, if we got it right, mm. then it's about understanding life well. Mm. Jesus said, "I have come that they might have life, life in all its fullness." It should be it should be a good thing uh, to be engaged in, and sometimes we've allowed it to become something different. Yeah, no, I, I think at no time that I've known greater than now, there's an appetite for personal development. Yeah. There's an appetite for kind of work life balance. There's an appetite for knowing purpose. Um, I I think there's a there's a great 
role to be played, you know, sitting in helping in that personal development space. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I um I I, I would sel- seldom uh maybe maybe mention the, the names or the sources of things, but I there's many a uh, Simon Sinek ism or a, a mm. Michael Heppel ism uh, yeah. that that would find its way into a Sunday sermon or or something that I'm I'm doing. I think, yeah, I think there's certainly a a, a place for the the personal development world yeah. to to meet with spiritual encounter. If you had a magic wand, Donald, and you said to yourself. Um, I don't care what the, you know, the hierarchy of the of the Church of Scotland says that I, I have to do, I have to follow, or anybody else for that matter. And you had this magic wand and you could turn back time or you could go forward in time or you could change the minds of people and you have one wave of it. What would you, what would you be sort of briefing that wand to do? Oh goodness, there's a there's a question. I don't think I would want to go back or or go forward. I think um, it would it would be something in in the now in in the moment. Yeah. Um, something that I'm, I must just pull the finger out and do it. But I keep saying to myself, I need to free up some time to do that um, actual ministry of of encounter and conversation and and being with folk. And and free up some of the time that I'm spending on the the administration and the pen pushing and the form filling and as in all walks of life, you know, there's there's more and more of that. Um, yeah, I think I think it's creating for for me and for others around the church. I mean, there was a time in the Church of Scotland um, history, and it probably still happens in in one or two larger congregations you know where, where the elders would regularly be be visiting and there'd be very much a sense of, of team ministry shared ministry um and giving folk the space and the time to talk about the things that are are really important mm. i i i kind of um think you've 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 sort of shaken that wand only a little bit and and, and not as not as um it, put it this way, if Jesus was sat right next to you, he'd be saying, now, come on, Donald, you can do better than that. <laughs> Check it again. Realistically, would you not want every single person in Scotland or certainly within your um, uh, uh, boundaries or par- parish, whatever, and to, to almost have a moment that says, actually, yeah, there is something in this and I'm going to find out about it. I don't know how you do that, but the magic one might just take over. I don't know, but the point, and it might be to do with ministry by walking around, mm. whatever, it, whatever it is. Um, but there has to be something that reverses the decline, because frankly, it's unfathomable that you will or all church uh, going will decline. It, what, what what happens then? I think the, the, the church is certainly changing and and has to uh, not 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 because the church in itself um, should change, and there are some you know God's eternal love is always going to be there. There are some constants, but because society has changed so much, mm. we we need to change in order to to make those connections that that are real. Mm-hmm. Um, a, an image, a metaphor that I often come back to um, is that of the, the Choyuteca Bridge. Are you familiar with that story? No, no, go on. Choyuteca Bridge. Um, a, a bridge um, built during the last century in uh, Honduras, um, built by the uh, Japanese, I, I, I think it was a Japanese design, and the bridge was designed to withstand the, the, the hurricanes and the severe weather of that area. And 1998, I think it was, Hurricane Mitch caused utter devastation along the, the Choyuteca River, and many bridges were taken out, apart from this Choyuteca Bridge by uh, Japanese design. 
it withstood the hurricane. It stood firm, but would suffer a greater uh, indignity in that the Choluteca River burst its banks, rerouted itself. And apparently to this day, the Choluteca Bridge connects nothing to nowhere. And I think that for me is, is a metaphor of the church saying, we're not moving. We've been doing this for 2,000 years mm. and we ain't budging. <laughs> mm. But we're no longer connected with a society around us that has changed so much and, and so much in, in my lifetime. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was ordained a minister in 1992 and folks still knew where the church front door was yeah. <laughs> and folk would come. Yeah. But not, it, but less so now, and and perhaps I mean we are an aging population, and and you pro and your uh, and your congregations will be a little bit older than the, the you know normal. But basic, but that doesn't take into account that a lot of younger people are just not coming into the church, and that and that's something that's it's a well, it's a marketing problem, but it's it's also a spiritual one as well. It's one one that um, Kevin's right. I think we are more spiritual, but I mean, but it's how do you actually impress your ver the, the only real version of it onto onto people? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I've certainly experimented, tried with with lots of different formats. Um, mm -hmm. Messy church is a concept that's been around probably for about twenty years now. What is, um, that? And what is it? What's messy church? Yeah. Um, it, it it originated in in England, and um, it was a, a minister's wife who uh, kind of set set things up, and it has become a, an, an international concept. Trying to bring families together mm. for often actually messy activities, but I think really the the, the name and the ethos is about. Life is messy, and, mm. and let's create a, a gathering place for folk to to be able to to talk about some of these things over some activities. Some of which will be messy things with paint and gloopy, messy things. Um, but I think it 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 far too easily becomes something that's just for the children. Yeah, where it it is about getting families uh, and people of all ages um, engaged um, in one of the, well, what's now part of my parish's responsibility, uh, there was a messy church group that was regularly attended by someone who was over a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and she would come along and, and she would take great delight in, in being able to be a part of something where, where there were young families as well. Mm. So yeah, we need to, create those opportunities um, in, in one of my communities at uh, quite a distance from any of the church buildings we've been doing a, a monthly coffee and conversation and, mm -hmm. and I've been quite open about the fact that we're, we're the church and, and conversation might get around to spiritual things but very much just beginning with you know, what's what's going on in your life mm -hmm. and last last month well, I'll give you the good news story. First of all, two months ago, mm. we actually had more folk at that gathering than had been in the church the, the previous Sunday. But last month, for a variety of reasons, some of the, the regulars were away doing other things. And there were only actually two, well, there were two folk came along, myself and as a, a trainee minister who's, who's working with me just now. So there were only four of us. So in terms of quantity, it was pretty low. But in terms of quality of engagement in the, the conversation, there was some real, real spiritual stuff going on, some real ministry. So I'm sure we'd measure all the wrong things. And it's certainly in the Church of Scotland, we still, we still me measure membership, where the reality is that a lot of folk who are officially church members never darken the door of the church mm. and there are lots of folk who just they wouldn't be members of anything no no <laughs> but they'll come along and they'll be involved but don't ask them to sign on a dotted line or commit to something <laughs> it's 
it's a really challenging it, it really it's almost like if you brought the the the, the greatest marketing minds uh, in the world together they'd still come up short i mean so i i wouldn't i wouldn't take it on to you know personally in any way but i mean but the, the little things that you can do i think are, are are things that you've already said um you know getting out and walking about and, and having conversations and it's almost worth saying okay i'll let the um, i'll let the admin stack up for a couple of months because frankly you know at the end of it who cares you know at the end on your deathbed you're not going to be saying you know i really wish i'd got that my, my monthly statement in this week <laughs> and and you're not going to be doing that but the mm. the impact that you can have in that in in in, in the same time it could be amazing, especially, and this is, and maybe I'm going to be provocative here, but would the church be more um, um, attractive to an audience? Were it more certain about the views that it was putting across? Because mm. the gospel, it, it can be quite clear, can't it? It's, it's not, it's not grey. It can be black and white, can't it? Hmm. I think I think some people would see it that way, and, and obviously there is a, a breadth of theological understanding, and and I think part of the changing society a, around us is about um, understanding gender, sexuality, some of those issues where some people very readily would say, well, it's quite clear, you know, the Bible says. Mm. But I don't think it's as clear cut as that. And I mean, I, I would, I think over the years, I, I've probably moved to a more progressive understanding of, of scripture and of the, the role of the church. Um, I would like to think that I would, that I would be you know, very accepting um, of and, and welcoming to anyone. Um, but I know there are others in the church who would say, well, what were they doing in church this Sunday? Uh, <laughs> ah. I I I, I kind of get I get that, and and actually any anybody that uses pronouns on on linked on on on, on link on LinkedIn does tend to suggest that sort of progressiveness. Uh, but you know you'll never find pronouns on mine uh, in in a month of Sundays. But the truth is, I do understand why you're as a as a church. Uh, almost almost that you have to be welcoming to everybody but actually i wonder whether or not you'll have more appeal to the many rather than the few by actually being uh, be, uh, absolutely crystal clear what you stand for yeah um i mean i think in in many ways i i i, I would be you know quite quite clear and and you know my my stance on different things sometimes you know is it is it worth causing division um yeah i i, I and and the answer is probably not donald and i and 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 i the last thing we wanted this podcast to be is a, is a, is a sort of an uh, in a way it's opening up a conversation that other people will be really interested in um, because the because you have um, um, you know you've put thoughts into our minds. I can tell. I can tell by Kevin's silence. He's thinking it all through. No, well, that's <laughs> normally what happens when Kevin goes a bit quiet. Yeah, well, he does. He thinks it all, and then all of a sudden he comes out with a devastatingly good question. Um, but um, but no, is, seriously, I do I do think like... there is a there's that there, there is something to be. People will love this because you've been open and uh, and honest about your views mm -hmm. and about the challenges. Kevin? Yeah, and the, there is that thing that are you black and white about right and wrong? Well, yes, you probably should be. But then again, the individual, every individual matters. You've got to be open to every individual. And you know, probably the, the I don't think it's, it's any bigger today than it uh, used to be. But we certainly talk about more today, this whole area of mental health. Mm. You know? if you start talking about a lot of those issues you'll quite often find that some of the individuals concerned would really appreciate that appropriate counseling from a, a mental perspective and there's there's great work to be done as a society so you know 
church center of our society should be center of helping people sort out those those mental health problems yeah mm. yeah absolutely and um i think in in days gone by it was much easier for the church to identify real needs in communities um where you know we, we have a wonderful uh, health service but um it, it does then create well you know so many situations of need are then met with but that's what the, the health service will look after us or you know government yeah. will look after us local authority that's that's their responsibility mm. um so yeah I, th- I think it is increasingly difficult for the church to find a role where it is um a force for good um and, and it's seen that way w- within communities mm. You are a force for good. Don't ever, ever, ever <laughs> think that you're not. I mean, I, I, uh, I can't imagine a world without the church. It's just, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. But I do think you are all in. I mean, all of, I, I, for my part, we have a couple of uh, um, uh, uh, vicars in 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 my town, and and um, for many years they left their budgies with uh, with us whilst they went off on holiday into various parts of Africa and stuff, helping the world. But their budget, oh boy, when you come <laughs> back, they, I mean, it completely destroyed the ec- the ecosystem. I mean, I mean, they anyway, by and by. Uh, but um, um, but we do sort of less often now, Kevin. Just a just a thought. Now we've mentioned the health service and government and so on, and I'm always a little bit cynical about the name of the national health service. It's not really; it's the national illness service. <laughs> I don't know about that. Is there is there not there a role? Flip that around and say, well, where's the national wellness service? Hmm. And hmm. You no, know, it's it's at the other end. It's not the picking up the pieces when things have gone absolutely wrong. That government does, that the council does, that the health service does. Is it not at the other end of the spectrum? Is where the church community sits offering the national wellness service yeah yeah i think you know i mentioned earlier you know the the secular world has certainly embraced um mindfulness meditation and and so on and you know things like um forest bathing <laughs> which has nothing to do with going swimming uh, but just the, the idea that 20 minutes you know walking in in nature is you know it it restores our souls. It is good for our our mental health. It's good for for our well being, and I, I, I've I've certainly experimented with 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 a few things like that. It's something that personally I I find very helpful, and and live in a beautiful part of the country and have uh, forest yeah. woodland uh, just just behind the house and. Uh, certainly appreciates the the walks and in, in the beauty of creation, and you know have occasionally encouraged others and said, okay, right, we can choose to we'll meet at the shop and we'll go for a wee walk, yeah. and the uptake is minimal. <laughs> But it, it's you know what I I did I I when I was recruiting a, a couple of years ago, two three years ago, I I, I basically. Uh, decided to recruit by going for walks because you found out so much more about the person Mm. because they're not looking at you directly over a table or something like that Mm -hmm. you walk in the side but you're you're both in the environment etc and you you, you can change the subject on a heartbeat and basically but what i found is to tell you everything Mm -hmm. and it's and it's almost like overload um and uh but but nonetheless a very very impactful way so I actually, I'm not so sure, Kevin. Wellness. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's what's required. I think, I, I, I think instead of wellness, if you had to have an NH, and something S, it would be G, and G for guidance. And I think the, the, the role of the church is, is to guide people about the way in which we live, and, and actually, um, you know, if because either you believe it or you don't. Now, the, if the ones who don't believe it, well, you know, it's a bit like marketing. Um, you're not going to be for everybody. Eventually, they'll catch up. But or maybe they're just late adopters. But at the end of the day, guide people, and 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 isn't that what Jesus did? I guess, but I might be wrong. I'm 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 not a, theolo- a theologian, so I, I yeah. It didn't. Isn't the whole purpose of the church to guide, and therefore 
when it comes to things like, in my view, I don't know about you, Kevin, but in, in my view, when it comes to things like gender, and forgive me, I don't mean to un, unpick some of these things, but there's a lot of evidence that says that when people have these gender sort of moments where they want to think of themselves as the opposite thing, it's contagious within a school. And there's evidence about that in 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 studies and so forth. And you think, why? And you think it's because there's an absence of the grown-ups guiding people, in my view. And I think that's it's almost like the church deserves that. Not only deserves, but should have that role. Because the last organization you'd want to trust is the government, but the church, on the other hand, yep. Yeah, or, or you know, if you imagine the Queen had a say, you know, rest her soul, etc. But you would listen to her, but you would definitely not listen to some jumped-up politician. But oh, the absolutely. church, there's a role there. Forgive it's me. A very firm view, Graham, that if you are clever enough and devious enough to become a politician, to become a member of the cabinet, or God forbid, the president of a certain large nation. <laughs> then it, by default you are totally unfit to be in in power and running. Well, I don't, but yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe so. But I don't know. Is guidance your? Is that something that you should be? I, yeah, I I think it, it it's part of the church's role. I think I would be be wary of of anything where the church was seen to be be giving a, a direct steer and saying you know, you 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 must live your life this way. I think mm -hmm. what we can do is create. The, the safe places for those conversations and for people together to to be able to to talk about these things far far too many things that are just not spoken about because they're difficult it's uncomfortable um difficult uh, I, I I honestly uh, I'm, I'm sure that we haven't resolved anything but it's <laughs> But it's been very, very helpful to chat it through. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I, I it, it's it's been a challenging fifty minutes from from my point of view. And uh, thank you for your questions and probing. And uh, well, you know, yeah. we, if 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 we serve any kind of point whatsoever, uh, Kevin and I just have to. Uh, I think we're curious about people, Donald. Mm. And I and I think that's that's something that's kept us doing this for well, as he said, four hundred episodes or so. And I th actually, I think from uh, in when if we're counting, you're four hundred one. So I don't oh. know what that means. In in uh, what, there must be some sort of biblical sort of connection to to four hundred one. Um, but um, but um, but you know, I mean, you're you're four hundred one. So we um, we've got into our four hundreds, Kevin. We have into our four hundreds. And it's uh, how long are we going to go on for, Graham? Another four hundred? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe so. I, I, well, I, you know, I, I just, I love the, I absolutely love the fact that you are our first ever um, uh, minister. I, I, we, we just haven't <laughs> had anybody like it, and you're such an approachable, lovely guy. Um, very, you. very, very capable. Um, I the only personal I mean mind mapping as you you said mind mapping was was one of those things mm. it's clear that your thought process is all about figuring things out by splitting oh. them splitting them up sort yeah of yeah absolutely yeah yeah um, um maybe the big maybe the biggest question that facing the church should be left in in your hands then. <laughs> <laughs> And um, uh, or maybe not. Maybe they should come to me. Uh, but uh, no, no, no. Seriously, you, you, you'd get lots of different op opinions. But I, I just, I just hope and pray that you basically find um, the right path, and that that path will be based on this conversation. When people look back in years to come, they'll say, "Yep, yeah, Kevin and Graham were bang on," <laughs> and uh, Don Donald uh, went away and he changed the world. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's it it it's the these kinds of conversations that that we need to have more of. And yeah, that curiosity that you spoke of that that's so important. And it I I don't think it's about having all the right answers, no. but living with the questions and and the curiosity. 
and and wonder of it all. Well, Reverend Donald McCorkindale um, from the Church of Scotland, you've been a brilliant guest on the Next 100 Days podcast. Thank you so much. Graham, we've been talking to a, a minister in the Church of Scotland, and we've been talking about mindfulness, mind mapping, change management, advertising and marketing. <laughs> Frustration. Um, frustration. frustration with, uh, uh, I mean, mission creep. I mean, yeah. we, we didn't quite say it in those terms, but crikey, it, 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 that has happened. And Lack of um, people turning up on your Zoom session. Yeah, but yeah, um, it's it's a it's a it's a very very challenging area, uh, and you know, and, and not everybody listening to this will agree with everything that was as said on both sides or either side or whatever, and everybody will have a view up to a point but the the likes of donald he's got to go and do something just as he's just said mm. and, and and you know i think there will be a flood of interest back in the church at some stage but they have to figure out what their ground is i, I think they have to be brave and i think they have to be brave enough to be certain and the certainty comes from the book and I think once they've, because once they've, you know, got that in their minds, they don't have to worry about the extremities as, su as such, because their home ground is big enough, is wide enough. Yeah. And I, and I, I would challenge some of the, some of the things that are going on in our world. If it's wrong, it's wrong to the church and it's wrong to society. It's wrong to community. It's wrong to the residents in his area. You know, and it's for me. You you're probably gonna you're gonna have to um, break a few eggs, but yep. but it's longer term. That consistency of message is what this world's missing it in is. this country, anyway. But whatever opinion. your organisation is, you need to stand for something. You need to be absolutely clear on what you stand for. You need mm. to know what your why is. Yeah. And you have got to stick with it long term. I don't mm. think it matters whether that's a, a business, a community organization, a charity, mm -hmm. or a church. I think the I, same thing is true. I, I, he's, he's clearly a, 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 a lovely guy. And, and he's, um, I, I, you know, if you bumped into it on, on the, you'd have, you'd sit down and have a good chat. Mm -hmm. And yes, you know that uh, some, uh, if there was a question of faith that came up, if there was a question of, you know, what should I do about this or what should I do about that, then it's helpful to have somebody like that around, because they can, they can almost like spin it back to you without preaching almost, yes. but sort of putting it back to you in a way that says, this is the right way. So you kind of agree without necessarily getting preached at. So, but I, you know, it's easier said than done, but these people are very gifted individuals. The church to become a minister is some, you know, it's impressive. Um, but I, I do think there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot further to go. And, you know, if anybody's listening to this in a thousand years, they'll probably see some, of, some of the things that we're frustrated about that they've resolved hmm. maybe not the belligerence of one of us but um but, but um thousand years to Mara smith's probably still sitting there being belligerent yeah i will under the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well as long as they have a laugh um but um uh it it's been another wonderful uh podcast kevin uh, one that i've thoroughly enjoyed with donald uh, Donald McCorkindale. And um, um, today I've been Graham Arrowsmith. I've been Kevin Appleby. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.